Hi everyone, if you're new here, I'm Alan with Earth Glow Inc. And this channel is all about sharing the joy of candle making. In today's video, I will be sharing with you my unfiltered review of 1617's fragrances. From how accurately I think they are described on their website to how they performed in my beeswax, soy, and cocoa cream luxury marketed candles. Now, I do wanna say that this video is not sponsored and these products were not sent to me. Uh, I purchased all of these oils for the purposes of this video and I spent over $500 doing so. If you're interested in my unfiltered and raw review of 1617, then keep on watching. So 1617 advertises themselves as a luxury marketed company and says that their fragrance oils are of perfume quality and also that they do not contain any phthalates, parabens, uh, that they're vegan and they are skin safe, cruelty free, and non-carcinogenic. So the way I'm gonna structure this video is I am going to smell each fragrance without looking at what their website says, and then I'll compare my first impression with their description of each fragrance on the website. And then at the end of the video, I will tell you all how each fragrance performed in my candles. So the first oil that I'm gonna be trying out is called Eternel, and I believe this means eternal in French. And I'm not gonna look at the bottle uh, because honestly, I can't remember uh, what scent notes are in this and the bottles on 1617 give away some of the fragrance notes. And what I just wanna do is see what I can pick up from a blotter strip without looking at anything in advance. And then I'll just compare that to um, what their website uh, says for each fragrance. So this is supposed to be their new scent. And um, let's see what Eternel does. This is, this is exotic, guys. This is clean. This is fresh and this is exotic. Um, this does not smell like anything I have smelled before. Um, I'm definitely getting floral notes, but they're clean florals and they're exotic uh, floral notes. Like if you had like a beautiful white, like water lily or something mixed with almost like a hint of rose or a hint of vanilla um, but it doesn't smell like vanilla it's definitely more of like a floral like a clean like south american river or something like floral according to their website eternal is a rich magnolia blossom and sultry jasmine dancing with notes of frangipani in this eternally sensuous fragrance, uh, anchoring notes of tobacco leaf, vetiver, dark vanilla, uh, and dark vanilla round out this exotic treasure. So it's described as oriental floral. And this is a really unique fragrance. Um, definitely, definitely worth uh, giving this one a, a try, um, especially if you have like an exotic collection. I think this would be a beautiful clean floral. Okay, so next up, I'm going to try Persephone, and this is also, I believe, one of their new fragrances. And Persephone, I think Persephone, isn't that like a Greek god or a goddess of some sort? Um, I feel, feel so dumb, but I feel like... Oh my gosh. Okay, this is so clean. This is like fresh linen in the most exotic, luxurious way. Wow, these fragrances, guys, like out of the bottle are very, very potent. Um, that's one of the first things that I'm noticing about them. And I have made all of these into candles, but I haven't like smelled them all in at least a few weeks. Um, so just like getting a fresh whiff of these fragrances after I've smelled like some from the flaming candle or some from candle science um, and each fragrance is different, but I will say in general that their fragrances out of the bottle, they're gonna like blow you away. Um, and you definitely wanna use blotter strips and maybe just put like a tiny bit on the fragrance blotter 
because the the potency is is intense um okay so for this one i'm definitely getting linen um almost like a eucalyptus like a fresh eucalyptus maybe a little bit of jasmine as well um and i'm getting some sort of a citrus in this fragrance something like orange zest or something not lemon it's more of like an orange uh citrus for the base in this one ah uh, it's hard for me to really say maybe just like some clean light musk or like white woods um it's really clean um in the base and it's just kind of smooth. Maybe there's like a little bit of cedar um, or a hint of vanilla, but I don't know. Let's, I'm also like almost getting some rose or something in this. I don't know if I'm totally crazy. Um, okay, let's take a look. So according to their website, Persephone is described as uh, clean, green, and fresh. Um, it is the morning spring following a long cold winter, bright and crisp like fresh linens on the line. Um, Persephone exhibits top notes of orange and cherry blossom, key lime and clean cotton, complemented by mid notes of plum and pomegranate, followed by base notes of bamboo and beechwood. Okay, the beechwood is definitely what I was picking up there. So a really beautiful fragrance. It's, it's a joyful um, fragrance. It's very uplifting. And yeah, if you're doing like a luxury line and you need like a fresh linen that's luxury, fragrance that I'm going to try out is Kathmandu and Kathmandu is a country I believe and I feel like this is one of their more masculine leaning fragrances but I can't exactly recall what these notes were so let's see what I can pick up oh yeah so this fragrance is I think this is probably my single most favorite that 1617 has. My personal favorite. I know this is one that they don't have very good reviews on compared to their other fragrances, but this one I believe is the closest thing I've smelled to Palo Santo in a fragrance and I sell Palo Santo. It's very hard to get that in an actual oil, um, but I definitely pick up Palo Santo in this fragrance um, and I also get like pepper like a sweet like a pink pepper in this one um, and then definitely some cedar some musk it's got a pretty rich uh, like base register to it um, so let's see what the website says according to the website uh, Kathmandu has spicy cedar top notes uh, mingling with sandalwood and heavy amber creating a divinely grounding fragrance. Um, and they're talking about um, the Sanskrit meaning, the qualities that it's um, luxurious, earthy, avaricious, um, and that it's in an earthy and woody uh, family. And that it contains malabar, pepper, and cedar for the top notes, sandalwood for the middle, and the base is Baltic amber. Um, for some reason in this one, I really, really get Palo Santo. I don't know if it's actually in there, but it's like the most true fragrance that I've personally smelled that reminds me of Palo Santo. Okay, so the next one I'm gonna try is uh, Le Jardin. I believe that's French for the garden. And um, for my blotter strips here, okay, so I'm gonna try this one so this is the only fragrance that i think actually if i remember yeah this reminds me so much of berries by stone candles um these two i gotta just smell this one again now that i have both of them um they are very similar to me so uh i definitely think that you should try one of them but i don't think that you want want to have both yeah strikingly similar. Um, I actually prefer the 1617 a little bit. Um, I think that this one has a better top note to it. I think there's some mint or something or some tea tree um, in the 1617 that I don't quite pick up in the stone candles version, but they're very, very similar. So I'm definitely getting like rose and definitely something minty or herbaceous in this one. Maybe some basil um, and 
in the base, I'm getting vanilla, but like an exotic vanilla. And okay, if you're gonna do a Valentine's candle of any sort, um, or even for something like Mother's Day, this is so beautiful. Um, I'm not gonna call it unique though, because it's so similar. Um, Stone Candles and uh, Le Jardin, I would definitely, um, like I would not get both of them, but really beautiful uh, one or the other kind of thing. Okay, and the next one I'm gonna try is Kai 23. And this one, if I remember correctly, is their best reviewed fragrance on their website. Um, and I remember when I first smelled this, being surprised at that because I didn't think it was all that great. Um, and then I smelled it more and more and more and sort of became addicted to it. So let's see, I can already smell it. Like I don't even need the strip. Um, yeah, I hate saying that I love this fragrance because there's something about it that's so addictive. It's like it has, it has a free component. You get like peach, but then the base is like patchouli, which I hate patchouli. It works in this fragrance. I don't like that it works in this fragrance. There's like some alcoholic component to it as well in the base. I think it's rum or something. I can't remember exactly, but God, it works. And I don't know how or why it works. Um, it's so, so South American to me. Um, I think they named this fragrance perfectly with it being called Calle 23. Uh, it's like Latin American Havana Nights. Oh my God. Okay, let's see what the notes were. Yes, so they describe this one as sultry Havana nights conjure illicit passion in our most sensual fragrance yet. I'll give them that. It's very sensual. Um, dark and seductive rum balances perfectly with the woodsy patchouli and erotic peach. Um, yeah, and I hate that I like this fragrance. Um, initially, like I said, I didn't like it. I didn't think it was all, like I didn't get what the hype was about it and... I've sort of become addicted to it and I don't like that I like this fragrance so much. Okay, the next fragrance that I'm gonna try out is Florencia and this one, God, it's another one guys that I recall being so unique and I'm sort of frustrated again that I smelled this one initially. Like when I got this fragrance back a few months ago, and I was like, oh, it's nice. Like it's floral, it's nice. And then I kept smelling it. And I was like, oh my God, I am literally addicted to this. Um, I'm gonna smell it again today and see if that's still the case. Um, yeah. Oh my God. This does something to you. This fragrance does something to you. Oh my God. Okay. This is such an experience. This fragrance is giving me chills. Oh my God. Okay. Florencia. I'm getting rose, but I'm getting like this beautiful rose. Like this fragrance transports me this fragrance, it transports me to Paris. Um, wow. Okay, I am literally in Europe. Um, this is the most beautiful rose fragrance I think I've ever smelled. Um, it's so elegant. I just want to cry, oh my God. This fragrance is so elegant. Like, I don't even like florals. I don't even like florals. Why? It's elegant. It's the most beautiful dark, dark, but sunny and seductive and just elegant, refined rose I have ever smelled. Um, this is a must try fragrance. Um, I think I'm gonna be doing this for my Mother's Day scent. Oh my God. It is so, so beautiful. 
Florencia. Um, I'm going to look at the notes, but this one I definitely am picking up Rose and I can't even tell what else is in it because it blends so seamlessly. I can't even like tell what's in it. So Florencia um, is a white floral bouquet with a warm and addictive finish. Yep, it's it's got the addictiveness to it. Um, it's rounded with base notes of Tongan vanilla and dark narcissus. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, it's in the floral family. And the top note is Bulgarian rose. The middle note is white orchid and the base is Tongan vanilla. Okay, so the next fragrance that I'm gonna be trying is Mojave, which I believe is a desert. Okay, guys. Why, why, why is it that 16, 17's fragrances are so unique? Like, why do they not have one dud? Oh my god. Okay. Mojave is arid. It's a desert. It's orange. It's literally like you are in the desert. This takes you to like the Sahara Desert or oh my gosh. Okay. It, it has a little bit of floral to it. It definitely leans more masculine. Does this need to be marketed as a masculine fragrance? No, I don't think so. Um, I think I have a lot of clients who are female that would like this and oh, it's got like similar like peppercorn element to it kind of as the Kathmandu, but very, very different fragrance. Um, this one also has like a Palo Santo, like a woody sort of quality to it, um, or a cedar or something, but it, it's a unique, it's like a Palo Santo almost. Um, okay. I don't know. And I, it does have a citrus element to it as well. Um, I think it's some sort of an orange or something. Um, let's take a look at the uh, notes from the website. Mojave is spicy notes of pink pepper and geranium mingling with earthy Palo Santo in this arid and alluring fragrance. A transcendentally masculine aroma with sublime notes of heady citrus evokes open desert plains. Uh, the top notes are geranium and pomelo, middle notes, uh, pink pepper, and the base is Palo Santo. So yeah, I think that the description, um, you get almost every note. The geranium is definitely light and in the background more. It's not like a heavy top note whatsoever. Um, this fragrance leans more masculine, but I think it definitely could be marketed um, as a unisex fragrance. Uh, yeah, I have nothing to say other than that this fragrance <sighs> is frustratingly unique. Next fragrance I'm gonna be trying out is Mayfield. And Mayfield, I believe is a place in England, I wanna say, like a, I don't know, I think it's in England. Okay, this is a vanilla and it has some citrus to it, maybe some lemon, definitely has like a round vanilla lavender vanilla quality to it. This does remind me so much of another fragrance. I'm gonna go grab the other fragrance um, that it reminds me of. This reminds me a lot of lavender vanilla, I wanna say from the Flaming Candle. And I'm gonna just go ahead and smell that one again, just to see if I still think that. This is similar. Mm, no, it's better. No, the Mayfield is better. Um, no, there's nothing comparable. Okay, if you're on a budget and you need to have a nice vanilla, um, and you can't afford the Mayfield, go with the Lavender Vanilla from the Flaming Candle. Um, if you need a five out of five vanilla, they don't compare. Um, now that I smell them side by side, this doesn't, the Flaming Candles, it doesn't even smell like vanilla, or it doesn't even smell like lavender. It smells artificial. Um, yeah, I'm sorry I said that at all. They do not compare. The, the, the top note in this one is like lemon in the 1617. Um, uh, but it's the, it's the lavender in the 1617 that comes through so much more. Yeah. I'm sorry, um, if you need a nice lavender, 
Um, let me go get the lavender from Candle Science and just see how that one compares. So now I have here the lavender from Candle Science that I want to smell side by side to the 1617. Just to see, like, do you really need to spend that much um, to get a nice lavender? Because if I remember right, I do really like the Candle Science. I can barely smell that now. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna say the Candle Science Lavender is your best bet. And I'm curious if you're able to um, get the Flaming Candle and the Candle Science. So Flaming Candle Lavender Vanilla and the Candle Science Lavender. If you could mix those together. Or if you could try the Flaming Candle. I know they make a Lemon Lavender. Um, to see if you could get a match for this at a more affordable price. But right off the bat, if you need something quick that's going to give you that best-selling lavender, um, the 1617, um, I'm sorry, it's the way to go. We're on the very last two, and this next one is called Lombard Street, which if you've ever been to San Francisco, it's a must-see. Uh, it's like this really crooked street that um, <laughs> like curves around, and you can't like see all the sides of it, but... Um, I went there with my grandmother actually when I was having my facial, uh, my gender surgery on my face. Yeah. Okay, so this is the one fragrance from 1617 that I don't, I'm not really a fan of. Um, it's, it's a floral. It's a light floral. It's a happy floral. It's sunny. It does have like rose and maybe jasmine to it and some other floral notes that I can't quite pick up what it is. Maybe cherry blossom or something. Um, it, I feel like this one will definitely have a lot of fans, but for me personally, this is not my favorite. This is the one fragrance that 1617 makes that I'm gonna pass on. Um, it might be a really nice blender. Um, the very last fragrance that I'm gonna be trying out is Alistair. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, and this one, I don't recall exactly what this one smells like. So let's see. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, 16, 17, why? You're killing me, you're killing me, you're killing me. Why is this so fucking good? Why is this so unique? Um, why? Guys, this is a must try masculine fragrance. This is a must try masculine fragrance. It's not even, you wouldn't even have to sell it as masculine. You could mix this with, I would beg to say even like Florencia and get something that is totally like blends out some of the more masculine notes in this. <sighs> what do I even smell? Oh my gosh, what do I even smell? It's, it's like woody, it's herbaceous. It's like I'm in <sighs> a spiritual place in the forest, like high up. These fragrances take you somewhere. That's the one thing that I really want to say and underscore about 1617 is they take you on a journey. I think I smell like ambergris, I want to say. Oh my God, I don't even know. Exceptionally distinguished, they say, abundantly verdant notes of cypress. Yeah, it's definitely like you're in nature. Uh, mingle with inviting tobacco leaf, a sensuous finish of sandalwood and ambergris round out this masculine fragrance. I don't know why it's so good. I don't know why it's so unique. You might not like it, but you have to try it. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, all of these fragrances I have tested in my wax blend, which is a mixture of beeswax, soy, and cocoa cream. Um, and these fragrances are some of the best performing fragrances as a whole that I have ever tried. 
Um, the hot throw on these fragrances is out of this world on almost 100% of them. Lombard Street and Kathmandu are the two fragrances that do have a lighter hot throw. However, when I mixed Kathmandu with Alistair, it was beautiful. It came through really well, um, but I would recommend blending that one. Unless you're using a parasoy or a paraffin wax blend, um, I would recommend blending Kathmandu. And Lombard Street by itself, um, after a two week cure time, does perform decently. However, I would still recommend that one as a blender if you're looking for that out of this world hot throw, unless you're using paraffin or parasoy. I could, I think that you could use it on its own with those wax types. Um, I realized that 1617's fragrances are an investment and I gulped when I paid over $500 to try all of them and with the shipping and everything from California to Michigan where I live, um, it was very expensive. However, I will say that they are worth the hype. Um, these are truly unique fragrances and whether or not you like them, um, if you're considering any sort of a luxury marketed candle line, you have to try these fragrances. Um, I don't have anything else to say. Well, that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did like it, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and please drop me a comment if you have tried any of these fragrances. What was your experience? And um, I will see you all in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and happy candle making.